So last week I had the absolute privilege to attend both Computex and the Cernology Business Expo. Overall, it was a fantastic time, met a bunch of cool people, connected with a bunch of companies with some products that were so cool, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to feature on the channel. But this video specifically is gonna focus on what I learned at the Cernology Business Expo. There was a lot of really cool announcements and some things that weren't covered when which I would have loved to see. I will talk about that uh, near the end of this video. And the expo itself that they put on was definitely more focused at business and enterprises. But even with it being more of a business focused event, there are still some things that I use on a daily, such as the uh, DSM software, uh, office uh, surveillance station, that there were some really cool announcements and improvements that they featured and highlighted that we will be talking about. So jumping right into it, we're gonna talk about the kind of first thing, and it was really the main point of the expo, and that is their Active Protect Appliances, which is an enterprise grade backup solution for kind of medium to larger sized businesses. This right here, Active Backup for Businesses, the solution that I'm currently using and for my size of a business, this is gonna be perfect. But the new Active Protect comes with some dedicated hardware and a more integrated all-in-one solution that is more scalable, provides really quick deployments for the enterprise kind of level that they're going for here. These appliances that they are selling for Act Protect are not going to have DSM as they are going to be purely focused on backup functionalities for larger companies, including a new UI, which is going to have a lot of similar functionalities to Active Backup, but will be more feature rich in those specific functionalities. The key features are like Active Backup, it's going to be able to back up PCs, Mac systems, software as a service platforms, file servers, and a lot more with current virtual machine support for Microsoft's Hyper-V and VMware. And when I was there, I kind of discussed some of the recent kind of cons with VMware, and they said that they are working on Proxmox integration, as we see a lot of businesses kind of move away from VMware towards that. They do plan on offering that as a dedicated backup solution in the future. These Active Protect appliances are gonna be an out of the box solution for IT professionals so they can focus more of their time in other areas so backup isn't, or at least hopefully isn't gonna be as big as a uh, time kill for these professionals. Active Protect is going to support incremental backups and global duplication across multiple sites, ensuring efficient use of the storage with immutable backups, offering write once, read many, backups to protect data against ransomware and other threats. And it's gonna support comprehensive restoration options, including letting users restore data from a file, folder, object level, and even perform bare metal recoveries or cloud-based restorations. Overall, offering a more streamlined and targeted approach, giving these businesses a robust backup solution without having to deal with the complexity of a full NAS system. The actual UI provides a comprehensive view of client platforms, backup schedules, and system configurations, all in a user-friendly format. And again, many of the features presented are very similar to active backup, but this includes a lot more features for monitoring and other options. Data restoration and storage is all localized, so you're not dependent on paying uh, a subscription fee necessarily to other cloud service providers to pull and store your data. And there is enhanced security, such as those immutable backups and air-gapped isolation options that does provide robust protection against data loss and security threats. And on the hardware side, it is rather impressive. The rolling out three rack-mounted solutions featuring AMD Epic processors, again, tailored for the enterprise use. This includes their GS series, which is coming soon, scalable up to 20 petabytes of storage, managed by a dedicated Synology switch and a 100 gigabit NIC. And I did get some hands-on with these things. I was uh, a little nervous because they, they're not cheap, especially when I was like pulling it out of the rack and taking it apart to see some of the inside. Uh. One thing that I would like them to kind of consider in the future that smaller businesses that don't have as big of a budget as these would require would absolutely love to use this software. So it's important for Synology to continue to support mid-tier models and more versatile desktop models would definitely help kind of bridge the gap here, ensuring that smaller users like myself or even mid-tier businesses aren't really left behind with this new software. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more, I do recommend Checking out the dedicated video from Naz Compares, he does a fantastic job diving into even more detail on what this is and what it offers, so I will be linking to his video down below. So with that, we are going to dive into something that 
I actually use, and that is Surveillance Station. I did a dedicated video on Surveillance Station, but if you don't know, it is a dedicated platform that is built into Synology NASs that allows you to manage and record security cameras. Because it is a business level application, there are a ton of options that even I don't use, including multi-site support, mapping, bunch of different things, but the features that I do use are absolutely fantastic. The kind of pricing model for Surveillance Station is both a kind of pro and a con. It's a pro because it's not like a subscription model where you're gonna be paying every month to keep the service active. If you get one of their cameras, you don't have to pay any fees or anything like that because you're definitely paying for their cameras. And NAS units include two free licenses, but what I'm getting at here is there is a per camera license that you are going to have to pay. It's around $50 for the features. For me, it's worth it. If it was a subscription model, I probably wouldn't be doing it. But overall, I like it, and there's some new cameras. One of them is a fisheye camera, which offers 360 degree coverage. And one of the really cool things about it, which they were highlighting at the booth, is this one fisheye camera can be broken down and de-warped into four individual actual feeds that then, with those feeds, you can actually move around and manipulate them themselves including specific control, AI features, things like that per each feed. And that's really nice to put on a wall or a ceiling to give you really good coverage of a specific area in which you're trying to monitor. They're also coming out with a new eight megapixel bullet camera, and then another much larger camera that is gonna support some of the new AI features that they're working on, including the ability to actually read like license plates and save them, and then you can like search for footage by license plate, which is really cool. And then in addition to that, they're starting to work on some third-party integrations for like locks, for example. And during that, they actually mentioned to me that they're willing to work with just about anybody to add these type of integrations. So it will be nice to see kind of how this grows in the future to incorporate all these other security devices into Surveillance Station itself. They're also coming out with C2 Surveillance Station, which personally isn't something that I would want to use as it is a 100% cloud-based solution. They're gonna have their own line of cameras that you can use with this. But overall, it's gonna be a pretty good solution if you have cameras like somewhere out in the middle of a field or whatever and you don't or aren't able to like link it up directly to a Synology NAS this could be a good solution for that. And on launch, they aren't really gonna be integrated. It's gonna be its own separate thing, but in talking to them, it is going to be their goal that they are gonna allow you to migrate these cameras to Surveillance Station and have it all integrated and work together. But on release, it's gonna be two separate platforms different cameras that do different things. And their C2 surveillance station, at least in the kind of demo that I saw, is has a lot of these same features as surveillance station, but not as much. It's kind of a, a much simpler UI that is reminiscent of other kind of cloud surveillance solutions, but it is definitely interesting to see the path that they're taking with that. And that takes us to our AI Office integration. Synology Office is one of those services that I actually use quite frequently as this is my, or Synology is my current primary backup solution. I have a lot of documents backed up there and I end up writing a lot of like video scripts and other documents within that platform. The uh, collaboration features are awesome. If I were to compare it to something, it's really similar to like Nextcloud Office and the features that it offers and just how it works overall. And with that, just like Nextcloud Office, they are going to be integrating AI features. You're gonna be able to control this with the Synology AI console where you're then going to be able to link up third-party services such as a ChatGPT, a Google Gemini, Azure AI, whatever you happen to want to be using. You're gonna be able to integrate that and use it in the mail, office, and the chat applications. You could give it prompts, you could have it write things for you. A lot of the features that you'd expect from AI Office uh, Suites are going to be integrated in this. You can see here, I kind of tested it out. I had it write me a, a quick guide on how to install Ubuntu Server. Did pretty good with any AI, you're gonna want to make some edits. And then within Mail, we went ahead and tested it out. You can ask it to write you something uh, that you may want to like tell your boss or send to a colleague. And if you don't like exactly how it wrote it, you can ask it to kind of uh, make it shorter, simpler. Overall, it writes pretty good and saves some time, obviously, depending on the actual service that you are going to be using with it. And an important thing, because you probably don't want to send confidential data over the internet to your AI provider, uh, it has a de-identifier 
wire, which kind of adds fillers where confidential information would have been. So it's not sending that information out. And then your third party AI is going to give you the prompt with the actual placers and fillers. And then locally on Synology, it will replace those fillers with the actual confidential data locally. So you're not again, sending that over the internet. And now for some additional highlights, they do have larger hard drives. Now, if you don't know, Synology actually makes their own hard drives. They're introducing their 20 terabyte drives, although 24 terabytes kind of seems to be the uh, standard in the industry, but it is nice that they do have larger options. Additionally, they did have some consumer level products out. They had their B station and B drive, which these act as kind of a, a introductory level backup solution where one's like a single drive, you could plug into your system and do backups that way. Then they have the actual B station, which again is kind of a step below having a NAS unit, focusing specifically on just general backup solutions, which these don't use DSM. And I asked around and they said that they are still committed to DSM and some of the consumer level hardware. Uh, even though it's like a lot of them, especially the disk stations are really starting to look outdated and Synology just overall, in my opinion, needs to kind of step up their game when it comes to the disk station series. There's a lot of new NAS units coming out that blow them out of the water. Granted disk station or the disk station manager software is probably the best in the business. It's still kind of discouraging that we haven't gotten any refreshed models. Uh, the, a lot of them are switching to AMD, which kind of sucks because then you can't use like Intel quick sync and hardware encoding that way. Granted, they do have dedicated uh, disk stations that are specifically for like video surveillance, which you're going to need those because they have uh, actual GPUs in them that are going to be required to use a lot of the AI features when it comes to surveillance station. But yeah, I really hope that Synology refreshes their disk station line at least by the end of the year, because you can only rely on your software being the best for so long before the hardware just doesn't cut it beyond the needs for simple file storage. A lot of people who get these NAS units want to use it for way more than just a NAS. They want to add the R suite, Plex, a Jellyfin, a bunch of Docker containers running a bunch of different things, a bunch of home services. And there's a reason why Synology isn't my only solution. I have three different devices back here doing all kinds of things because I, I just can't do a lot of the things I want to do on just a Synology disk station at the moment. Really good line of consumer level NAS units encourages IT professionals and other people in the industry to actually upgrade and use the software on the business level. I think it is integral and incredibly important that they really focus on the consumer level stuff because trickle up growth when it comes to getting enterprise clients, at least to me, and I'm not really a professional in the kind of NAS business space, but I, it seems that trickle up is a lot better than kind of trickle down when it comes to the uh, economics of people using these NAS software. I really hope Synology picks it up and ups their game and consumer level as they clearly have with the uh, business applications and whatnot. So I do hope and pray for that. Alternatively, something that I know they would never do is uh, sell the software. I mean, you could probably get away with charging like Microsoft pricing for disk station manager and even charging like a, a support fee annually or something like that, because Oh boy, would I love to put it on some different hardware. But with that, that is some of the primary things that were announced at the Synology Business Expo. If you're interested in learning more, again, Nas Compares was there. He does fantastic videos and he's more uh, knowledgeable in this space. A bunch of different videos. I'll link to a, some of his down below. I do recommend you check it all out. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and goodbye.